Well, good morning, everybody. Here's our uh, first attempt at having our church online. So we just spent the last half hour worshiping God as, as Chris led us in worship. So you're gonna find the links on the homepage. Most of you are gonna receive uh, this initial link through an email, but everything will be on our homepage. We're gonna try and push this out to YouTube, probably Facebook. All the links will be available on our, on our webpage. But here's the heart behind this, is we just gave God a gift, and the gift of our hearts and our mind and our worship and acknowledging who he is as our savior who he is as our sovereign king. At the same time, this is, a, this is an offering and a gift to you. We wanna make sure that as a congregation, we are, we are meeting together and ministering together, whether it's online or in person, as much as we possibly can. I just read through the Forsyth County News this morning that Governor Kemp said that it looks like this is gonna be another eight weeks of our lives. We don't know what the future holds other than that Jesus will always remain Jesus. But as we continue to walk alongside of each other as brothers and sisters in the congregation, we want to make sure that we are providing as many opportunities as we can to attempt to be normal in, in our daily lives as we walk with Jesus. And we provide as, much, as many opportunities as we can to do this with one another, to see one another, to talk with one another. So in this week on Tuesday night, there is going to be a Zoom meeting for the students. So Peterson and Lori are gonna lead that. On Wednesday night, the men, we're gonna have our Bible study by a Zoom meeting and we'll be in Romans chapter 6. And then on Thursday night, uh, the women are going to have their Bible study through a Zoom meeting. So Julie will be leading that. Every single one of those, there is a link, whether it's on the Google Calendar, on our webpage, or right on the homepage, down in the middle in the upcoming events. Every single one of those, if you click on it, there is a link to test Zoom. So whether you're using your phone, an iPad, your computer, um, I encourage you before those studies are scheduled that you get online, that you test your Zoom connection to make sure that you can see uh, yourself and that you'll be able to see others as you interact and that you can hear and that you can speak and, and have, a, have a time of just of laughter, of encouraging one another, praying for each other, and digging into the Word together. So that is what's coming up this week. This morning, we are continuing our journey in the book of Acts. So open your Bibles to Acts chapter 14, and we will jump into the Word of God. Heavenly Father, we love you tremendously, Lord. And uh, as always, we, we gather, we assemble, we turn our, the attention of our minds and our hearts and our mouths to you, Lord. We worship you. We trust you. We hope in you. We're confident in you. And Lord, we know that people are going to be watching this at different times in different locations. But you are the one who, who binds us all together in your beautiful son. So we're asking that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon each right where we are, that you'd speak to us through your word, that you'd speak to us in our hearts. And Lord, as, as we go about our daily lives, that we would pursue you, that we would hear you, that we would obey you, that we would hope in you and trust in you in all things. Cause us to grow in your beautiful grace, Lord, and our love for one another. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So here we are in the midst of what's called the first missionary journey of Barnabas and Paul. And we're coming to the, the end of the road in this journey. So in verse 21, we're told that they, when they had preached the gospel to that city, and this is the city of Derby, that they made many disciples. They returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. It says, strengthening the souls of the disciples exhorting them to continue in the faith. So here they've, they've traveled from Antioch as the Holy Spirit called them and sent them. They went to Cyprus and then they headed north into modern day Turkey and traveled inland. And through those journeys, we've already covered uh, the account of what occurred in those places. Last place in Lystra, the crowd stoned Paul. They sought to execute Paul 
stoned him, thinking him to be dead and dragging him out of the city. Paul revives, he goes back into the city and it says the next day that they depart for Derby. And here's there in Derby, we have no context in regards to um, the specific circumstances other than they were preaching the word of God. They're not just preaching the word of God, but they're preaching the gospel. They were evangelizing this community. And we're told that they made many disciples in this community, many followers of Jesus Christ. And then because we're not told that why they didn't continue uh, traveling uh, to different locations, but through the Holy Spirit, this becomes the end of the road for them. And my sense is that in the hearts of Paul and Barnabas, they've been on this journey. It's been over a year, maybe two years. The entire first missionary journey is roughly three years long. That it's in their hearts to go back and to visit the communities where they've shared who Jesus Christ is, where people have responded in faith to Jesus Christ, their desires to go back and to encourage their brothers and sisters. How are they doing? Because as they travel backwards, remember in Lystra, this is where they sought to execute the apostles. In, in, in Iconium, uh, Barnabas and Paul, it says that they escaped violence. There was, they were planning on stoning them. They were made aware of it and they were able to escape that community. In Antioch, they were expelled from the community. So now they're going back to these same cities where they had preached the gospel, where they're curious and they're hopeful that their brethren, their brothers and sisters, these babes in Christ, that they're doing well. And this is what I titled this morning's message is SOS, for strengthening the souls there in verse 22. As we sit in our own context today, the, the, the phrase SOS means that there's a crisis, that there is an immediate need for action in the life of the person that is crying out uh, for, uh, the phrase has been, save our ship or save our souls. Here the idea is strengthening the souls of the disciples. And I title this SOS in the, idea, uh, in the idea of stabilizing our souls because this word for strengthening, it literally means to place firmly upon this ideal of, idea of stabilizing. And when we apply it in, in regards to the gospel and apply it in regards to our relationship with Jesus Christ, they are seeking to go and strengthen the souls of their brothers and sisters in Christ that their faith in Jesus would remain unchanging in, in spite of and in contrast to the troubles that they're experiencing in the culture. Let's read through the rest of this. It says that they were traveling to these cities, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. So when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. Now when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From there, they sailed to Antioch, which this, was, this would be their current home in this circumstance. But here's their heart. They're going, and their, their desire is to strengthen and to stabilize the souls of the men and women in these specific communities, in their specific circumstances, in their relationship with Jesus. And this is, when we talk about our souls, this is our inner self. This is our, uh, the thoughts that we think. This is our will, these are our emotions, this is our feeling, this is our inner life that needs stability in the midst of what's going on in our outer life. And here it says that Paul, this is Paul is essentially saying the exact same words that Jesus says, that we must, that it's necessary, that through many tribulations, and this word for tribulations, this is through many troubles, Many, many circumstances in life where you feel like you were being pressed and you were being crushed, that the outward circumstances that want to cause and often do cause instability and they cause weakness and they cause fear and they cause timidity in our own thoughts and our own processes. Paul is encouraging and exhorting and comforting. Brothers and sisters, just this is what we do as often as we come together is encourage one another point each other to Jesus, 
Remember who he is as God. Remember what he's done to save you and to forgive you. Look at how he has provided for you in history that you would have confidence that in the midst of the trouble that you're sitting in today, right now, that he is the one who is stable. You're on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. He is unchanging. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this stability in our lives, it, it's required in our inner selves. And this is where we often uh, turn our attention to the need for worship in our lives. What we just spent the last half hour doing, lifting up our voice to God in recognition and who he is. It has its way of bringing about stability in the midst of the circumstances. We turn to our God in prayer. Right now, as we are living in the midst of a crisis where we are crying out this emergency SOS to God, God stabilize our souls. That as we live out our lives, whatever that looks like in our different contexts, that we would be stable and firm in him, regardless of how we are feeling pressed and crushed from outside experiences. Now, as we're just in the beginning of this crisis, we're all sitting in the news and we're sitting in the unknown of what's gonna occur in the future. Within our own body here, I have yet to hear that anybody's lost the job. I have yet to hear that anybody's sick. But as we do read news stories, I read a news story this week uh, from about a woman in New Jersey this woman lost her mom, her sister, and her two brothers. So four people out of this family passed away from this disease. That hasn't happened to us yet, but this has happened to this woman and this is her circumstance. Imagine the pressure and the crushing and the trouble that is going on in her life and the life of the other family members that are walking through that circumstance. As we move forward in our current trouble, in our current crisis, more than likely, jobs are going to be impacted. Finances are gonna be impacted. Health is gonna be impacted. We don't know what the future holds other than Jesus will always remain Jesus. Amen. He is our God. He is our savior, he is gracious, he is kind, he is compassionate. And as we process through this, we wanna make sure that we are looking to him and not only individually looking to him to stabilize our souls, that as often as we can and whatever the means that we use, that we are reaching out to one another and encouraging each other and comforting one another, seeking stability in the midst of this current trouble that we're in. And I mentioned that Paul is essentially quoting Jesus as he says that we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. At the end of the Gospel of Matthew, as the disciples are asking Jesus the question of what is going to be, what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Listen to Jesus' words of exhortation and comfort to us as his disciples, as his followers. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, because many are going to come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. They will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended. They will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. I am praying that in, in this season, as we're all um, attempting to listen to the Holy Spirit, that our love would not grow cold towards God and towards one another and towards our culture, but that our love, that God would cause us to abound and to pour out love in all different ways for one another. 
He continues, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. So as Paul and Barnabas are going back into these communities, again, this isn't, they're not just passing through for a day. They're not there for a week. They're there for an extended period of time, making sure that their brothers and that their sisters in their inner man and inner woman, that they are stable in their relationship in Jesus, regardless of what their lives look like on the outside. And one of the means that they do that is as they sit in each one of these communities and as they're interacting with one another, the Holy Spirit is making it clear and he's he's bringing to the surface individuals who are being appointed, it says, as elders. And we're told in the New Testament in, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we can sit in 1 Timothy and then Titus. There's all these descriptions in regards to here's individuals that God gives gifts of grace to and not just gives gifts of grace to these individuals, but gives these individuals as gifts to his children so that they would continue to be encouraged. So when you look at this word for elders that are being appointed, they're being ordained in these communities. They're doing this through fasting, so they're abstaining from food and gathering together, listening to the Holy Spirit, following the Holy Spirit, and it says that they're commending these people, entrusting these individuals to the Lord, that they'll remain faithful to Jesus, that they'll remain faithful to the word of the gospel, that they'll remain faithful to all the words of God as they minister to continually seeking to stabilize and encourage the souls that they're ministering to in this community. Again, what's beautiful, I think, is we're, we lack the details in the description, and often uh, we want more information, but so many times in the Bible, the lack of information is truly a blessing. Because in regards to, well, who are these individuals? Were they old? Were they young? Were they Gentiles? Were they Jewish? Did they have a background in the Old Testament, or did they have a background in idolatry? Regardless of the different circumstances, God gives these these various and diverse gifts to individuals who have various and diverse personalities, who find themselves in various and diverse circumstances. And they're all trusting in the Holy Spirit. They're loving Jesus. They're loving God, seeking to love God with all their mind, heart, soul, and strength. They're seeking to love their neighbors as themselves. Again, this is to be the heart of these elders. And as they're going from community to community, this is, this is how God has chosen to continue to strengthen his children. Not only in our, our individual relationship with him as we pursue him individually, but I have had so many people, men and women, invest into my life coming into me with his words, coming to me with his gospel, coming to me with the testimony of what God has done. And this is what we want to turn our attention to. So when they arrive in Antioch, we're told in verse 26, that this was the city that they had been commended, entrusted to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. Verse 27 says, now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported, they informed all that God had done with them and that he, God, had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So they stayed there a long time with the disciples. As we have been going through the book of Acts for the last five weeks, so going back when we, we jumped in and looked at 1 Peter, and 1 Peter ends with this comment that, this, that everything that he was writing about in regards to the suffering of believers in their different communities and how he was encouraging them, he was ultimately talking about the true grace of God in their lives. In 2 Peter, as we looked at 2 Peter, it ends with the need for us to grow in grace. When we were in Acts chapter 13, we were told that we were to continue in grace. Last week in Acts chapter 14, We are told that they are communicating the word of his grace. And now here again, just from the, I I find this fascinating because the, over the last five weeks, it's come up in this repetitive theme. And here from the very beginning, when the Holy Spirit 
called the church in Antioch to separate Paul and Barnabas to the work that the Holy Spirit was calling them, he was calling them to. It's identified that these men, that they were commended to God's grace. They were commended to the nature and character of who God is. Because when God declares himself to us, he declares himself to us as gracious, that he is kind, that he is compassionate, that he is merciful. That not just in our faith and our belief and our trust in him, but in our minds, in our souls, in our actions, and in our words, we are ultimately, we are commanded. He is, he is a, we have been placed into our God. We have been entrusted to him, into his grace, into his character. And at the same time, like these elders that were just appointed, they are entrusted themselves with the grace of God to handle God's grace in spirit and in truth and in wisdom. And here, when they come back to the community where they were commended to the grace of God for this work, right? The activity that God had called them to, that's now complete. So the whole journey there, all the way to Derby, that end of the road, and now all the way back to Antioch. The work that the Holy Spirit had called them to do, it's now complete, it's now full, and it's now done. And what they do when they get back to their brothers and sisters is they start talking about the workmanship of God. And this gets back to our title for this whole uh, series, this whole travel that we're doing through the book of Acts is we are looking at his workmanship. We are looking at God building human beings. We are looking at God saving us from death, from sin, from the consequences even of sin, from destruction, from the troubles of this world. He's placed us into himself and now we're watching God build us and causing us to grow in his grace. And when Paul and Barnabas come back to the community, they are communicating to their brothers and sisters, look at the work of God in this world. Look at the, the open doors that he has swung open to faith for the Gentiles and the Jews at the same time. That these individuals, that as the gospel is proclaimed in these various communities, that the Holy Spirit is ultimately the one that is flinging open the door of faith. But as God is flinging open that door of faith, he is using us as his children to be his voice, to communicate this incredible gospel. And as we interact with one another, we have so many stories where we come back and we encourage and we stabilize and we strengthen one another by telling each other, look at what God did. You may not have been with their physically with us on this missionary journey as the Holy Spirit sent us out on this work, but you were participating as our brothers and sisters. You were participating in prayer. You were participating in the finances and look at what God did through us. And this has been my constant prayer as we've been traveling through the book of Acts. I'm begging that God does this again, that in our own community, in our own circumstances right now, in the crisis that we're dealing with in this world, that God would be stabilizing our souls, that we would abide and remain in Jesus, that we would abide and remain in his word, that we would continue with him, not depart from him, not freak out, but continue to abide and trust that as we do, as he fills us with the Spirit, as he fills our mouths with words, as we seek and pray for the opportunity that God would fling open the doors to be able to share the gospel, to be able to encourage, to be able to provide stability and strength in the life of believers, to be able to share the gospel with unbelievers, that this would be a time of opportunity, that we as a, as a congregation, that as we are distant from one another physically, that as we are praying to God, as we are seeking him, as, we, as often as we can gather together, whatever means this looks like, whether it's text messages, whether it's Facebook posts, um, the message on our website, we're gonna make sure to open up the comments so that we can dialogue with one another. But let us be intentional in informing one another about the great works that God is doing in our lives, in our households, in our communities, in the midst of a time of true trouble and true crisis. So as we continue um, again this week, we want to make sure that we're pressing into our relationship with the Lord, pressing into our relationship with one another as brothers and sisters. I want to end this morning with...
Peter's prayer at the end of 1 Peter. This is uh, chapter 5, verse 10 of 1 Peter. And he uses these works, earlier words. Earlier on in this letter, Peter is describing uh, the body of Christ as a building that is being built. And every single one of these words it has this idea, again, of, of a building being constructed, the body of Christ being built together. He uses this word perfect, which means to be sufficient. He uses this word establish, which that's our word from the book of Acts, talking about being stable and firm. He uses the word strengthen, which means that God is granting to us the ability, the power to do what he's uh, uh, calling us to do. And he uses this word to settle us. And again, that's this idea of being on the firm foundation of Christ. But here's our prayer as we end this morning. May the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory, glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever. Amen and amen. So, Calvary, know that you are greatly loved. Know that we are here for you. If there are any needs that arise in your life, any praises, any prayers, again, reach out to us. We're going to do our best job to reach out to you and continue to pour out God's gifts of grace that he has given to us that we would pour those things out to one another and that we would inform one another of all that God is doing in our lives to stabilize us in the midst of a time of trouble. We love you greatly and we love our great God with all of our hearts, with all that we are. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.